What is up, you guys? Welcome to another edition of Controversial Thoughts. I am Carnivore MD. The last video that I did on Instagram in which I talked about toothpaste got censored. I'm pretty sure it wasn't censored because I was talking about toothpaste, but let's just cross our fingers this one doesn't get censored. Pretty sure that if I don't talk about, quote, chocolate cake, wink, wink, or any other super controversial topics like that in this video, this one will remain. And judging by the amount of interest I've gotten in questions about toothpaste, mouthwash, and oral hygiene, I do want to get this video out. It, it, this video kind of started as a joke. I thought, oh, maybe I'll do a video about toothpaste. And then everybody wanted to hear about toothpaste and why it was bad. My whole life, I brushed my teeth with toothpaste until I realized what a scam this thing is. Look, I'm going to go through all the ingredients in normal toothpaste, why you don't want to be killing bacteria in your mouth, why mouthwash is just a horrible thing. I'm certainly not a fan of fluoride. It makes absolutely no sense to be putting that amount of a mineral into your mouth, into your body. Um, certainly there's a little bit of fluoride in our drinking water and in some places in the world, but we know very clearly that too much fluoride is very harmful for humans. And we should not need fluoride to have healthy bacteria resistant teeth. So let's just start with that piece. If you guys have not listened to the podcast I did with Stephen Lynn, on my podcast, which is Fundamental Health, you should go do that in conjunction with this video. Because if you care about your teeth and your oral health, you need to know the answer to the question that we answered in that video, which is what causes tooth decay? And the quick answer is not bacteria in your mouth. It's not eating sugar. It's not as simple as that. Sugar simply is not the cause of tooth decay. It certainly can worsen tooth decay when you are nutritionally inadequate. And when you have a deficiency of, wait for it, drum roll, fat soluble vitamins like vitamin K2, which are found in animal meat and organs. Imagine that. So yes, of course, when most of the population has a deficiency in vitamin K2 and other fat soluble vitamins like vitamin D, vitamin E, maybe even vitamin A, these are all critical for healthy teeth and bone formation. You will uh, have decay in your teeth when you give your body sugar. Not a good thing, right? But that doesn't mean the sugar caused it. It's very similar. It's analogous to what I've talked about with diabetes. Just because sugar worsens diabetes, and I'm talking about things like honey or fruit, obviously I'm not a fan of processed sugar at this point. Uh, that seems to behave differently in experiments, and that's a topic for a different controversial thoughts video. But sugar, quote unquote, let's talk about honey or fruit being bad for diabetes. No, I don't think they cause diabetes. And I've talked about this at length. I did a whole friendly debate with Ben Bickman, talked to many people about this on my podcast, but in the setting of already disordered metabolic health, they may worsen it, right? In the setting of already nutritionally bereft teeth, sugar, honey, fruit may worsen this, but that doesn't mean that they cause it. And when you get enough nutrition, when you have fat soluble vitamins like vitamin K2, vitamin D from real sun, vitamin A from liver, vitamin E, and no vitamin A is not a toxin. I've talked about that on previous videos, guys. Uh, your teeth will be healthy even if you are eating fruit. Uh, it's not going to be a problem for your teeth. The cause of tooth decay is at its root fat soluble vitamin deficiency. Weston Price realized this. Stephen Lynn is talking about this. I talk about it on the podcast. Where do you get fat soluble vitamins? Vitamin K2, animal foods. But Paul, can I get vitamin K2 from natto? Yes, you can get part of it from natto, but it's only certain metaquinones. You're not going to get the full spectrum of metaquinones unless you are eating organs and meat from well-raised animals. End of story. Plant foods simply fail when it comes to optimal nutrition for humans over and over and over. So with that in mind, why the heck are you brushing your teeth with toothpaste? If you want to get the plaque off your teeth, you can just use a toothbrush and water. That works fine. And now let's go down the rabbit hole of why all these extra ingredients in toothpaste and mouthwash are horrible for you. Prepare to have your mind, your mouth blown. Let's start with this as a screen share. Here is an ad for common toothpaste, Colgate Total. Help keep your teeth and whole mouth healthy with Colgate Total Original Toothpaste. Breakthrough formula with zinc and arginine two elements found in nature to provide serious, superior proactive protection with an asterisk, asterisk. Well, you get plenty of zinc and arginine in meat, so you could brush your teeth with meat toothpaste if you wanted. What's more, the formula in the toothpaste also fights bacteria in your mouth, tongue, cheek, and gums for 24 hours. That seems to suggest that you would want to fight bacteria in your mouth, which I say is a concept that is completely wrong 
and I will show you why. And they conclude that is to keep your whole mouth healthy all day, as if you're trying to create a sterile environment in one of the most bacteria, microflora rich cavities in your whole body. Crazy. This fluoride toothpaste also protects against cavities, plaque, gum problems, sensitive teeth, tartar, enamel damage, and staining. In addition, the Colgate Total Original Toothpaste freshens your breath for the ultimate confidence and a dazzling smile. Complete bullshit. We'll talk about the way, the reason that if your breath is bad, freshening of a toothpaste is not what you wanna do. You need to figure out why you have dysbiosis. But let's talk about bacteria. Let's start with bacteria. Um, we've already established you can get zinc and arginine from meat. So we've already established that steak or liver will be a better toothpaste than Colgate if that's what we're using as a metric of those nutrients and toothpaste. But let's talk about this antiseptic mouthwash, the nitrate, nitrite, nitric oxide pathway, and hospital mortality, a hypothesis generating review. Isn't this quite interesting? What we found is that because antiseptic mouthwashes eradicate the oral bacterial flora, this nitric oxide generating pathway is abolished, which may result in nitric oxide deficient conditions, potentially leading to life-threatening complications such as ischemic heart events or sepsis. I am reading this from the abstract, guys. They are saying that in hospitalized patients, their hypothesis is that perhaps giving these people an antiseptic mouthwash is making them worse. Imagine that. Imagine if the bacteria in your mouth, which are part of this nitrate, nitrite, nitric oxide system are actually beneficial for you. Wouldn't that be an interesting part of evolutionary design? Well, that's in fact how it works. And I talked about this with Al Dannenberg when we did that podcast together. And using a mouthwash, killing the bacteria in your mouth will abrogate, will abolish, will decrease the amount of nitric oxide produced in your body because those bacteria are part of that. Nitric oxide is important for vascular uh, dilatation, erections, vascular health, hugely important. Listen to the podcast I did with Malcolm Kendrick about vascular health, nitric oxide, statins, and all that stuff. I have a library of these for you guys. So do you want to abolish all the bacteria in your mouth? No, you don't want to do that. But that's what Colgate wants you to believe you should do. And then look at this one. Post-exercise hypotension and skeletal muscle oxygenation is regulated by the nitrate reducing activity of oral bacteria. This is a trial, this is a controlled trial, crossover design, 23 healthy individuals, five, 15 males, eight females, two treadmill trials, moderate intensity. After exercise, participants rinse their mouth with antibacterial mouthwash to inhibit the activity of oral bacteria or a placebo mouthwash. Okay, we should include a third mouthwash here, which would have been a beef and, and liver mouthwash. That's our next product at Heart and Swell. It's a joke, obviously beef and liver mouthwash, they would have done the best. These findings show that nitrate, nitrite synthesis by oral commensal bacteria is a key mechanism to induce the vascular response to exercise, exercise over the first period of recovery, thereby promoting lower blood pressure and greater muscle oxygenation, which was abrogated, which was abolished when the people had a bacterial rinse. Oh, okay. Talk to me now, Colgate Total. Do you really want to kill all the bacteria in your mouth? They're important. They're making nitric oxide, which is important for blood pressure lowering after exercise, muscle, muscle vasculature dilatation, muscle oxygenation. Still think your mouthwash is good? I doubt it. What about the other things in toothpaste? Well, don't I need toothpaste, Paul, to get the plaque off my teeth? Absolutely not. You don't need abrasive things in toothpaste, which are usually diatomaceous earth or other silicates to scrape bacteria off your teeth. That's a great way to destroy the enamel on your teeth though. Doesn't sound very good to me. What about bad breath, Paul? You don't actually kiss your girlfriend, Paul, with uh, a mouth that doesn't have toothpaste, do you? And as I talked about, talked about in the live, maybe this is why Zuckerberg uh, deleted it. Um, I definitely kiss people that I'm dating without brushing my teeth. And my subjective experience has never been that anyone has ever told me I have bad breath. And believe me, I have asked because you always wonder and you think, do I have bad breath? I don't brush my teeth. I don't taste it. And certainly in my life when I've eaten less well, I have tasted dragon breath in the morning, but I don't really think I have morning breath. I don't really think that I have bad breath at all. I don't have a woman here that I've kissed right now. Maybe I'll get a woman that I've kissed in the past on the podcast to corroborate this, but my you have to take my word for it. They've never told me my breath tastes bad and I don't use toothpaste. 
bad breath is not an absence of Colgate Total, Crest, or any other crappy toothpaste. It is essentially dysbiosis and halitosis caused by problems in your gut and in your microbiome. And this has been shown over and over and over in the research, successful treatment of gut-caused halitosis with a suspension of living non-pathogenic E. coli bacteria, a case report, and what about this one? Microbiota and malodor etiology and management. Accumulating evidence indicates that the microbiota play a critical role in physiological processes of humans. However, it might also contribute to body malodor by producing numerous odorous molecules, such as ammonia, volatile sulfur compounds, trimethylamine, et cetera, et cetera. This can totally affect your overall body smell or the unpleasant smell originating from your mouth or other orifices of your body. And the problem is not an absence of toothpaste. The problem is dysbiosis. And how do you fix that? Well, that is the $64,000 question. Um, and we will address that on a future podcasts. But in summary, understand if there are foods that you are eating that are contributing to dysbiosis, that are contributing to dysmotility in your gut. As I talked about in my book, The Carnivore Code, I fear that lectins may do that. Lectins are high in things like beans and nuts and grains and legumes. And if they damage the gut lining, if they damage uh, the cells in your gut, the crypt cells that make mucus, the E. coli can come into contact with the gut and cause issues. This is something I outlined in my book, The Carnivore Code. Refer to that for more details there. Actually recently recorded a podcast with my friend Evan Brand. We talked about mold and mold exposures for some people, not everyone, but some people, mold toxins might contribute to persistence or recurrence of things like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Listen for that podcast in the future and what to do about it. But fix your dysbiosis if you have bad breath, don't cover it with mouthwash or toothpaste. That is not the problem in the first place, as I've said. Now, fluoride, super controversial topic, guys. If you look at the literature, it's mixed. I think that there is a good amount of evidence that replacing or having high amounts of fluoride in your body will lead to bone weakening and brittleness. And I don't want to get more fluoride in my body than I would normally get from drinking water. Don't give your kids, don't take a whole bunch of fluoride in your body if it's not evolutionarily consistent. We've learned that over and over. How many times must we learn that, okay? So this data is mixed. We don't have great studies. It's controversial. Fluorides and osteoporosis. Uh, sodium fluoride has clearly been shown to have pronounced effects on the skeleton, probably more than any other currently available therapeutic agent. Unfortunately, these effects appear to be both beneficial and potentially toxic at the same time more clear understanding is needed, okay? Uh, the basic mechanisms whereby these effects are exerted. So fluorides are tricky. Fluorides effects on the formation of bones and teeth, the influence on genetics. Fluorides are present in the environment. Excessive systemic exposure to fluorides can lead to disturbances of bone homeostasis, skeletal fluorosis, or enamel development, dental enamel fluorosis. I spoke about this with regard to the Hadza, a lot of people in Tanzania have brown stains on their teeth. It's dental fluorosis. The severity of dental fluorosis is also dependent upon fluoride dose and the timing and duration of fluoride exposure. Fluoride's actions on bone cells predominate as anabolic effects in vitro and in vivo. They turn on, fluoride turns on osteoclasts, which cut bone, they resorb bone. And uh, ah, fluoride has been shown to induce osteoclastogenesis in mice. Uh, fluorides appear to mediate their actions through the MAP kinase signaling pathway, can lead to changes in gene expression, cell stress, and cell death. Do you want to have this in your toothpaste? No. As I said in the beginning, tooth decay is not an absence of fluoride. I am sad that I let, that my parents let my dentist put fluoride all over my teeth when I was a kid. Really what I needed was just more vitamin K2 in my diet. That's all I needed. You want kids with healthy teeth? Give them liver. Give them meat. They don't need fluoride. And their bones and many other processes in their body will thank you long-term, as will yours. You don't need fluoride in your toothpaste. You don't need soaping sodium lauryl sulfate, uh, which basically makes foam to make you think you're doing something. You don't need minty freshness. Correct the halitosis. Correct the dysbiosis at its root cause. And you definitely don't want or need harmful ingredients that are going to kill the bacteria in your mouth and disturb the nitric oxide system, as I spoke about in great detail. As I was doing some research for this video, I found a pretty cool graphic from Cornucopia Institute, toothpaste ingredients to avoid. 
And I did not even know all of these things were in toothpaste. Obviously, if you listen to my previous video, you don't want carrageenan in your toothpaste. You also don't want colors, polyethylene glycol, anything ending in oxynol, anything nano peroxides or sweeteners. And look at all these ingredients that can end up in your toothpaste, carrageenan, all sorts of things. This list is huge. Do you want these chemicals in your toothpaste? Why not just not use toothpaste in general, guys? Or I've got this brilliant idea now. We're going to make meat and liver toothpaste, or you can just make it at home, hard and soil. I'm just going to start telling everyone I brush my teeth with steak and liver from now on and see what kind of response I get. Really, I just brush my teeth with water and they're fine. And I know all you guys are looking at my teeth in this video. So here you go. I don't have cavities. I don't have bad breath. There's no way to prove that. But in the future, I promise I will bring on a female to corroborate the quality of my breath. And with that, I will wish you all a good day. I hope this video has been helpful. Check us out at heartandsoil.co if you want some meat and liver toothpaste, or if you want some desiccated organs. We just released Whole Package, which is our men's, or at least testosterone support supplement. It has testicle, the most testicle of any supplement on the market, and liver and blood. We talked a lot about nitric oxide in this video, and obviously both men and women will understand the importance of nitric oxide for blood flow to all of our special bits that are used for all of the fun things we do in um, reproduction or sexual intimacy. So check us out, Heart and Soil, grab some whole package. I also think it would be beneficial for women who have low testosterone in general as well, or may have low testosterone. And that is all for today. Stay radical. I love you all. To the Instagram, Facebook, YouTube powers that be, there's no reason to censor this video. Nothing to see here. Move along. These are not the droids you're looking for. Chocolate cake, chocolate cake, chocolate cake.